Betty White in Life with Elizabeth, featuring Del Moore. Incident number one in the life of Elizabeth occurred the day she brought home a parrot. But uh, before we look in, one word of caution. If there are any woodpeckers watching, this incident is not for the birds. Elizabeth, there's a buzzard on your hand. <laughs> eh, sorry. You better have a story ready for Alvin. He's coming in the door right now. Oh, hi. Have a nice day. <laughs> Mama? No, it's in my throat. <clears> throat> if I keep talking like that, we'll have to change our towels to his and his, won't we? Yeah, I guess it's just a frog in your throat, honey. Alvin, hmm? I, um, uh, I have a surprise for you. But guess who I bumped into on the way home? Steve? Oh, star. Uh, <laughs> Steve Martin, honey. He... That's it. That's a surprise. You talked without moving your lips. You're studying ventriloquism. Oh, no. Well, not exactly. Four star. Four star. There, you did it again. See? Oh, that's great. Uh, Steve who, darling? Four star. Wait. Uh, uh, yeah. Elizabeth, there's a feathered monster on the stick back there, and I'd like to see him. Alvin, this is Brentwood. Brentwood. Oh. Brentwood, this is my husband, Alvin. Shake claws. Elizabeth, where did you get this? At the pet store. I couldn't resist him. Isn't he adorable? No. Well, he's molding. He sure is. I didn't say moldy. I said molting. Oh. Look, honey, I love animals, too, but you already have. You've got Stormy, you have Floyd the gopher. And the I have Josephine the goldfish, I know, but Brentwood stays. Brentwood, oh. <laughs> honey, what do you have against him? Look at that face. <laughs> to clean it up. Well, it just makes me uncomfortable, that's all, having a feathered Frankenstein sit there, give me the hooded eye. <laughs> This, what's the matter? Oh, it's a little feather. Oh, it's a little feather, baby. Why, you can't see it, honey. Watch her, watch her. Oh, no. Why does that parrot keep repeating those stupid words? It sounds like wash tub. You're just sensitive about your figure. I am not. His voice irritates me. All parrots sound like two pounds of steel wool being scraped on a blackboard, don't oh, they? Oh, honey, don't even say it. Ooh, it gives me a kick. Ooh. Brentwood. Brentwood, look. Brentwood, this is Martha. You two are going to be brothers. No, Elizabeth, you can't keep them both. Oh, shut up. Alvin, Brentwood wants to name him Washtar. Why don't you go get a bed for wash tarp? There's a little box right under the sink. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. If Bel Air can't talk, back he goes. Brentwood. Can he talk? <laughs> <laughs> you boy. Oh, there you are. Oh, here we go. Now, here you go, Goldie. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Dad, do we put you right? You're going to have to prove to me that that parrot can say something besides wash tub. Okay, but wouldn't it be funny if he turned out to be smarter than you? Come on, Brent, we'd say something. Uh, speak to Mommy. Not only moldy, he's a dummy. <laughs> There's a handful of policies in it for you. He won't talk. Say something stupid. I mean, say something stupid. <laughs> Robin, you're getting comma happy. Well, that bird brain won't talk. Hey, did you hear that? I said bird brain about the parrot? <laughs> huh? to get an inferiority complex. Complex. Say, talk, stupid. Come on. Brent would say something. Come on. Alvin, you wipe that taxidermist look off your face. Why don't you face it? The stupid bird won't 
talk. Well, we're on the wrong track. Let's use psychology. Psychology? Sure, like they do with children. Just be careful. You know how children won't say a word when you want them to talk, and in the minute you ignore them, they, they start to chatter a blue streak. Elizabeth returned the parrot. Oh, Alvin, please. Return the parrot. Honey, for my sake. Well, only if he can say something besides wash tub. Honey, I feel like a fool using child psychology on a parrot. Um, tell me, T.J., how were things on the market today? Uh, don't look. Hmm? Uh, fine, fine. Wheat went up three points. Well, I, um, I myself bought, uh, 4,000 shares of the AT&T. American Tell and Tell? No, the amalgamated tarantula traps. <laughs> <laughs> This is ridiculous. I'll make that parrot talk. Oh, now, Alvin, no. no. Parrot's gone. Redwood? Maybe he fell in the wash tub. If he did, that's money down the drain. Glendale. Honey, you're better. Where? Here's another one. Uh-oh. You don't suppose... Suppose what, honey? No, it couldn't be. Oh, of course. <laughs> Just the same if there's a green cat on that perch saying, Washer, washer. <laughs> look. <laughs> and you said he wasn't smart. Why, well, he does a better mambo than you do. I'll finish my crossword puzzle while you put away the beast and cook my dinner. Yeah, well, you dance better than Alvin. You, you dance more like Tyrone. And with twice the power. Washer. <laughs> Alvin, do we know anybody named Tyrone Washtar? As soon as you're through being zookeeper, you can tell me the name of the sun god of Lower East Cambodia. How many letters? Seven. If I get it, I finish the puzzle. Sun god of Lower East Cambodia. Washtar! Washtar! Why don't you keep your beak up? Hey, that's it. <laughs> of course. Washtar. And you said he was stupid. <laughs> Alvin, you look Brentwood right in the eye and apologize. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, get the bolster off my shoulder. Yes, get him off throwing that over him. Can I keep the kitten, too? Yes. Elizabeth, aren't you ashamed? <laughs> Thank you very much. Incident number two in the life of Elizabeth has to do with sleep. As we all know, sleep is a wonderful thing when indulged in at the proper time. When not indulged in at the proper time, it can be very injurious to the health, as Alvin is about to discover. Look, honey, let's take our coffee in the living room and finish it and watch the fight. Okay? Oh, honey, I can't leave the kitchen like this. You go ahead. Oh, honey, but it's no fun unless you share it with me. All right, I'll just stack the dishes. I'll be right in. You go on. Wait till you watch that Rocky Giggly Ugly Mo fight. Oh, brother. <laughs> Alvin. Huh? You're cute. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hurry up, honey. <laughs> Hurry up, honey. They're about to start. Elizabeth, honey, stand. Oh, please. Excuse me. <laughs> Who's fighting? That bomb in the white coats there in Rocky Giggly Island. You never could pronounce those Irish names. <laughs> there they the left hook, Rocky. The left. Get off! Did the bomb in the white trunks be Hold so happy? Hand. He hit him with his head. Follow! Get off, Rocky! He, he's doing it, darling. He's getting off Rocky. Stop in the fight! Hey, Bowel, he hit him with his head! Bowel! Get up! Calm oh, down, it's, it's all over. Honey, they've got to give him a rematch. Bowel! Honey, you saw me hit him right between the head, just like that. Bowel! Come back to Mama. Come on. Sorry, honey. Turn his set off. <laughs> I did! Ten rounder. What do we get? Ten seconds. <laughs> Better rematch it. What do you want to do tonight, honey? Go to a show? Okay. I don't feel like it. <laughs> Let's 
talk. Talk? Sure, talk. You talk to me, I talk to you. If we keep it up long enough, it becomes what they call conversation. Look, honey, where are my stupid cigarettes? Right in your stupid hand. On with the stupid matches. Will you stop being so upset because Giggly Rockhead lost the stupid fight? <laughs> Do you want to start the stupid conversation, or shall I? You're a character. <laughs> oh. Ah. Feet down, sweetheart. Why? Because it's a prelude to sleep. Prelude? Hmm. What are you trying to do, finish the blanket before bedtime? <laughs> Those are the Argyles I promised you. Argyles. <laughs> well, that'd be nice if they covered shoes and all, mm. so I would just... <laughs> Darling, please don't go to sleep. I won't. Then open your eyes. I just want to rest them for a minute, honey. Open them. Honey, honest, I'm not sleepy, sweetheart. What is that, the machine gun stitch? <laughs> knit two, pearl one. <laughs> I don't knit so good, but I pearl like a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cute, knit pearl. <laughs> you know, you said something a little while ago that made me feel pretty wonderful. I did? What? Mm -hmm. What did I, I say? Mm -hmm. Well, you said that watching the fight wouldn't be any fun unless I was there to share it with you. Hmm. That's right, that's right. What I call a real marriage. A real marriage, yeah. Are you going to sleep? No, no, honey. I'm just resting the eye muscles. <laughs> Nobody could sleep this early in the evening. What are you saying about our marriage? Well... We have a happy marriage because we share things. You share your paycheck with me, and <laughs> I share Mama with you. <laughs> Mama's nice. Wake up, Alvin. <laughs> In spite of all of our jokes and everything. That's what I mean. She's my mother, but still we, we joke about her because underneath is a, a real strong love. Same thing in everything we do. <laughs> now, you take this evening, for instance. This isn't a very exciting evening. With me knitting and you relaxing. But we're sharing a, a certain coziness. <laughs> now, for example, this skirt. If I told you this was a sweater I was knitting for you, you'd, you'd try to wear it just so you wouldn't hurt my feelings. Mm. I really believe you would. Can you imagine Harry wearing a skirt like this just because Dorothy told him it was a sweater? Mm. <laughs> He'd throw it in her face. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's because they don't share emotions. You remember the time... Remember the time you and I were up in the Sierras and the moon was... was... <laughs> Alvin. <coughs> hey, honey.
What? Just what? If you're going to hate me, the least you can do is hate me when you're awake. What happened? If you're looking for your foot, you're sitting on it. My <laughs> foot's asleep. So did the rest of you. My whole leg is numb. What are you hollering about? I'm married to a Rip Van Winkle who doesn't love me. Oh, honey, for goodness sake, of course I love you. Oh, hold the leg, hold the leg, honey. You can still go yourself. <laughs> oh, honey. What's the matter? What's the screaming for? You hate me. Honey, I do not hate you. I love you. Oh, take it easy. He went to sleep. Went right into hibernation in the middle of my future. Oh. How happy he was. Well, look, it's coming back to life. It hurts now, honey. I but... know it does. That's why I'm doing this. Honey, please, look, cut it out, honey. I love you. You know I do. You do not. Well, well give me another test. Well, it is. It's killing me, honey. Okay. Ooh. Oh, it's awful. Here. Here's a sweater I knitted for you. You, you, you knitted... This, this is a sweater for me, you knit it? Well, you don't have to wear it. It's just an experiment. I, I thought I heard you say you like to sleeve the sweaters. Oh, what do you mean, not wear it? Of course, honey, I... <laughs> you do love me. I do? I, of course I do. Incident number three in the life of Elizabeth occurred because it was Alvin's night to go bowling. Let's see if you can figure out what could go wrong. Go on, figure it out. I'll wait. You can't? Good. Well, I guess we'll have to show you. Oh, boy, steak. <laughs> you won't pick up your napkin, sweetheart. Oh. There, for my growing boy. Let me add it. I'll put your plate in the oven. You get rid of whoever's at the door. Listen, honey, you leave it right there. This will be the quickest brush-off job you ever saw. I think that should be whomever's at the door. Whomever's at the door, get rid of whom. Yeah. Hi, Alvin. You all set? Uh, uh, Dave, look, you're not supposed to be here till 7.30. It's only 6.15. Yeah, I know, but Mavis was out of town, so I ate early and come on over. <laughs> hey, look. Brand new bowling ball. It's not as heavy as my old one. Yeah. Watch. Uh, Dave, look, we were just sitting down. If you don't Mama mind. here? Mama? Uh, no, Dave got the ball off. Hi. Hi, Dave. Aren't you a little early? Well, Mavis was out of town, so I ate early and come on over. Oh, well, you sure you won't have a bite with us? We were just sitting down. The he ate early, dear. Maybe I'll have a cup of coffee with you then. Uh, I'll go get washed up. Uh, you know, I probably picked up five million germs between home and here. <laughs> I don't mind somebody eating with us, but I hate to have somebody stare at me while I eat. What's the germ talk? Is he a germicidal maniac or something? <laughs> oh, now you folks go right ahead, because I've already had. I hope the operation will be a huge success. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you didn't read the article, huh? What article? The article last week's journal. It says we're living in a world that's just crawling with germs and bacillus and streptococcus, too. And you know, any one of them can get you. Here. You better throw this away, because I had my hands on the steering wheel, and I haven't had a chance to sterilize it yet. Well, over there, Dave. Well, be sure and boil it before you use it again. Will you please tell this streptococcus to go wait in the front room? Honey, I can't very well. Um, you, Dave, you sure you want to have a bite with it? Oh, no, thanks. I already had. I'll just have some coffee when you do. <laughs> Well, I, I feel guilty eating in front of you like this. <laughs> you know, speaking of feeling guilty, <laughs> the neighbors don't know old Mavis is out of town. And they ain't seen her in a few days, you see. Uh, uh, <laughs> Elizabeth, uh, pass the salt, please. So I figured I'd have some fun. You remember that old song, with her head tucked underneath her arm? <laughs> well, I've been singing that around the place for the last few days. And tonight, I come walking down the street with my bowling ball tucked underneath my arm, and I'll bet you they think it was old Dave. man. <laughs> <clears throat> we're, we're, we're eating, Dave. Well, that's all right. I've already had. Here, this had egg on it from this morning. And you know, bacteria starts collecting the minute you leave that. Thank you. That was butter from tonight. Well, butter's even worse. One little strep to coo, coo can do more harm than a whole <laughs> of Oh, Dave. How do you think our team's gonna do tonight? All right. 
Right. Well, I figured that with uh, Bulldog Smith and Richard and you and I, we ought to be able to beat that bakery out pretty easy. Yeah, easy. Well, go on, go on. No, here. Hmm? I'll only eat it. Dave, if you're hungry, I'll get you a plate. You know, she does pretty good, Alvin. Uh, I... Yeah, I very seldom miss my mouth. <laughs> or maybe once in a while I get soup in my hair. Only when I'm wearing dark glasses. L Elizabeth, you mean she does pretty good. Well, she doesn't get much lipstick on the food. You know, lipstick is greasy and, and it got us dust particles. <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me just a minute. You polish up. I'll now, Alvin, don't let her drink that tap water. You should see the microbes in one teeny little drop of that water. Looks like an aquarium. Can you get that, that, that Louis Pasteur out of here? No, honey, he doesn't mean any harm. Look, you've studied bacteria before in school. It's nothing new. Yes, but I don't like to hear it described. Now, no, look, for my sake, just make a joke out of it. Please. Okay, I'll try. All right, honey. <clears throat> Tell me about Mavis's trip, Dave. Oh, she's back in Kansas. Went back to see an old aunt. What's her name? Antiseptic? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Her name's Lavinia. <laughs> uh, Lavinia, that's a good, sturdy American name, isn't it, dear? Nothing sturdy about Lavinia. She took sick from eating tainted asparagus. <laughs> uh, make up a joke about it, Elizabeth. She makes up these jokes all the time. Say something funny, honey. <laughs> Never say taint at the table. <laughs> Never say taint. Hey, you know, you don't chew your food enough, Alvin. That's the well, he hasn't had a chance. Uh, look, why don't you go on down to the bowling alley and warm up the chalk or something, Dave? <laughs> He's just trying to get out of giving me that cup of coffee he promised me. Okay, I'll get the coffee and serve the both of you. Eat quick while it's gone. <laughs> Play. Don't you boil your dishes? Uh, Dave, cut it out and talk about the bowling. <clears throat> well, now, these look clean enough, but if you put these cups under a microscope, you've got nothing but streptococcus. <laughs> didn't you boil these cups, Elizabeth? No. No, I didn't, Dave. We have a better idea than that. We boil our lips instead. Oh, it seems to me that it hurt. <laughs> Go on, eat, Alvin. You haven't touched your food. I'm not hungry. How about you? Uh, Aren't you going to eat your steak, Elizabeth? No. No, I'm just going to let it stay there. Maybe the streptococcus will drag it back to the sink. How about your salad, Alvin? I heard a rumor that it grew next to the tainted asparagus. Well, the worst thing in the world is to let food go to waste, you know. <laughs> hey, how about the germs? Oh, they'll have to look out for themselves. <laughs> hey, why didn't you tell us you were hungry? Well, you only had two steaks, and I didn't want to put you out none. Well, oh, I'm all of the practical jokers. Look, give me a moment. No, no, wait a minute. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let me have a little bit of time. Hey, say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, everybody. And now, here to say goodbye to you is the lovely star of our show, Betty White. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. You know, before the fellows went bowling, Elizabeth learned some very interesting things about bacteria. Did you know the germs go to sleep? And when they get up in the morning, they're awakened by streptococcus clock. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you'll be with us again next week. In the meantime, once again, goodbye, everybody.